record and perfect. Alrighty, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending where in the world you are. This is Rachel Jensen here. We're going to wait another minute, I would say, for folks to log on. I know sometimes with Zoom, it, it makes you log on to the latest and download whatever program. So we'll just wait a moment. And while I have you all here waiting, is James on? Yes, James. James S. in Valrico, Florida. You might know what to do at this point. Um, why don't you all type in your name and where it is you are calling in from? That'll give us a good idea of who we have online with us. I know there are a handful of you that are friends, which is awesome. So you'll be able, maybe you're all watching this together, who knows? Uh, but it'd be neat to hear where it is you guys are all calling in from today. And I apologize, I'm not going to do video today. Allergies have definitely gotten the best of me, so I apologize if there are some sneezes here in the presentation. All right, so we have James from Valrico, Florida. Thank you, James. We have Dexter from New Jersey, Mark from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Amanda, the traveling realtor, is from Cabo San Lucas today. Awesome, Amanda. All right, I know there are more of you on here and it's okay, I know we have our sales team on too. You guys can let us know where you're calling in from. We have Joe is in Cape May. We have Jessica in Nashville. We have Jesse in Raleigh. I'll, I'll wait a minute or two since I know folks are still getting logged in here. We have James in Colorado, Eric and Holly in Houston. Allie is in Belize. I'm so glad Allie that you made it back to uh, to your home country at this point. All right, so uh, there's a, a lot more of you that are on, but what we're gonna do is just get started here. As I mentioned, we are recording this presentation here. Uh, oh, Matt, Matt is in Vermont. So awesome, we have people from all over the place. For this presentation, we have our owners who have their spot in the first right of refusal list. And then we have also invited people from the wait list to join us as well in case a spot opens. So with that being said, we are going to get started. Uh, I know there are a handful of you who have not yet had the chance to visit Belize. Here's just a little overview for you. If you want to learn more about the country, we did a Belize 101 presentation where we talk about uh, the location of the country, the government, the population, the healthcare, residency program, safety, all of that. Just let me know if you'd like a copy of that and, and I'll send that over to you. Otherwise, I'll be on here for at least an hour talking about that. And I, I know that's not why you're on today. Um, but we're going to just buzz right through here. You're able to see a little bit more specifically where we're located. So our projects are located on Ambergris Key. It is the number one location in the entire country for tourism. It's where two thirds of the tourism revenue is generated from. And so we figured as a development company, we've been on this island since 1998, it made sense to concentrate our efforts on developing projects on this island specifically. And one of the big reasons why this island is so popular is because the reef parallels the island right over here. If you're following my cursor, there is the largest living barrier reef in the world that, that is paralleling the island and you're able to get out to it in just a matter of five minutes uh, from leaving the shore there. So yes, we have a lot of divers and fishermen. I know, I think, um, Jessica, we were talking, you said you were diving or snorkeling out there. We have a lot of divers and snorkelers and fishermen, people who love fishing. There's incredible fishing over here as well. And then just generally the people who want to get away from life. If you have not yet been to Amber Grisky, uh, it's a very, very charming Caribbean tropical town. We get around by golf cart, bicycle, walking. There are a limited number of, of cars and vans on the island. Those typically tend to be taxis, but it's a very, very safe community. And why a lot of people like coming to Ambergris Key and then tend to come back is because you do not have that all-inclusive feel. You're able and encouraged to go to the restaurants and the souvenir shops and the local bars and go karaoke with the locals and really integrate yourself into a community. And that's why we tend to find people continue to come back to the island. Uh, and I know for many of you, you have been to Ambergris before. You continue to come back to Ambergris. Uh, James, I know, James in Colorado, this one, I know you've been itching to come back to the island. Um, and we have a lot of people who are, are on that same boat as you. So if you take a look at this, this bottom box, we're located on Ambergris Key towards the southern part of the island. And when you look a little bit closer at the map and you see San Pedro over here on the right-hand side, San Pedro is really the heart 
of Amber Grisky. This is the primary town. There are many neighborhoods, but San Pedro is the primary town. This is where uh, you'll find a lot of those restaurants and shops and, and, and sh souvenir stores and that karaoke and uh, hotels and whatnot. And so we are located just a five minute boat ride away on West Amber Grist Key. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into that location specifically, but starting again from the top, uh, we're located on Amber Grist Key, the Southern part of the island. Uh, and fun fact is that Amber Grist Key uh, used to be connected to Mexico. And in 700 AD, I believe it was, um, the Mayans built a channel that ended up dividing Mexico and Amber Gris Key. So there is a little channel between the two. If you ever take a boat up there, you are able to go through the channel. You have Mexico on one side, Amber Gris Key on the other side. It really is, it really is quite neat. But everything is, is truly centered around the southern part of the island in that San Pedro town area. So to get a little bit closer to the location, we are right over the bay in this area over here where you see that red pin saying ECI development. That's where this specific community is. It's about a five minute boat ride from back back street on San Pedro there and you just go right over the bay. And I do want to give a disclaimer that the reason we were able to build these over the water homes is because of the location. If we presented over the water homes on the front side of the island, you can see the reef right over here, it would have definitely been denied. If we did it on the back side of the island, uh, it would have definitely been denied as well. And the reason for that is because in Belize, you're not allowed to build over the water structures in marine reserves. And all around the island is marine reserve, but because of our location, it's a private land. Uh, it was surveyed as individual lots. We were granted the go ahead. We got the permits and approvals in place. It did take about a year and a half or two years, James Sweat. I know, know you've been following us and I appreciate your patience on this, uh, but we did get all of the permits and approvals in place so that we are able to do over the water structures. So that's just digging it down there a little bit more, but uh, you see the San Pedro town right over here. You go right across the bay and this is the community in which we are. And right over there now, there's a hotel called Brahma Blue. There's also some very large villas, uh, probably four to 5,000 square foot villas in this area, but that's about it. Well, there is a restaurant, Coconut Cafe, but other than that, uh, it's, it's a very quiet area. And one of the big attractions and draws to people who go over there and stay at Brahma Blue or go dine at Coconut Cafe is that you're close enough to San Pedro where you can be on that boat and be back and forth within a couple of minutes, but you're outside of this, this hustle bustle, we'll say, of the San Pedro downtown area. So it's a very convenient location. It's a beautiful location. Uh, you get the sunrise and the sunset views, and it feels like you're on a private island. And there's another private island, uh, Cayo Espanto, which is just on the other side of Ambergris here. And they rent out a couple bungalows there, and it costs $1,000 a night up. So you have that sort of environment, but you are still on Ambergris Key, just a boat ride away from San Pedro. So the site map, I sent out the site map to everybody prior to getting on the call today, but just a heads up that nothing has changed since then. It is 20 homes in total. These 20 homes are uh, over the water at the top part. And I was talking to, um, to Alan and May from California a couple of days ago, and we were really trying to get a good handle on the location um, and where each of the homes were located. But you can see at the top, part, oh, and May referred to it as a Christmas tree. That's why I meant that she referred to it as a Christmas tree. And at the top part of the Christmas tree up here, uh, you have the recreation area. So this is an on land area. As you continue down the Christmas tree, you end up in the water, and this is where you have the over the water structures. So there are 20 homes in total in phase one. That's what this phase will be, phase one. We're going to be building the recreation area, which is up here at the top part of the Christmas tree, uh, the palapa and the common area, which is here towards the bottom, and then the reception area as well for rentals. Phase two. So we are going to have a second phase and I'll show you that location in a moment. It's going to be anywhere between 19 and 21 homes and within phase two, we'll build the pool and the restaurant slash snack shack. So that uh, we are still a little bit of time away from phase two, September is when we're going to officially um, the site full for it, but Phase two is where you will have the pool and the restaurant snack check 
And then phase three will have condominiums and I'll show you that layout in a second. So just to break it down a little bit more. So today, phase two will be in this area over here, the blue block, the condominiums. Phase two is going to be uh, the, the homes. And so you can see that phase two is going to be, uh, in some, is, some of it's gonna be over the water and some of it are going to be on land tiny homes. So phase two, I think, phase one, I think is, is definitely the winner in this case. Uh, I personally like the location the best. I think it is going to have some of the best views as well. Uh, and of course, it's all considerations to you to, for you to think about before we get started here. There are going to be three home models for you to choose from. You did all get a copy of those floor plans and renderings, but we're going to go through them a little bit more in depth. And then all of the homes are built with pilings down to the bedrock and steel reinforced concrete. Uh, they are built to hurricane category four standards. I know that was a concern for many of you. So that is uh, very relieving to know that they are going to be built to hurricane category four standards. And also because of our location on the island, and I am going to just go back, uh, we tend to be shielded a little bit also from any, any big storms that are coming in. Um, t storms tend to come in from the east. Now, needless to say, that's not always the case. It may not always be the case, but uh, they tend to come in from the east. So we're pretty well shielded because we have uh, the reef number one, which blocks out a lot uh, of the water and then number two san pedro the bay and then we're in this year all of the homes are individually strata titled you will get titled to the property uh, the one point i wanted to make and i don't recall off the top of my head if anybody is planning to use their ira um, if you are planning to use a self-directed ira belize is requiring that you your self-directed ira has an llc and that llc is the owner we can talk about that more in depth uh, for your personal situation of eco features. So something for you to consider and to know is that each of the homes will have the individual reverse osmosis systems. So you'll be able to uh, have your own water right there in each of the homes. There are also going to be solar panels, which will be the use the electricity that you're using during the day and then the wastewater vacuums. So we're not going, there aren't going to be batteries for um, the solar panels. So it's a hybrid system. You'll use the, 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 um, light during the day, the sun during the day, and then you'll be connected to the grid at night. We'll be connected to the grid all the time, but uh, primarily you'll be pulling the energy from the sun through the solar panels. So it, you'll be cutting back tremendously on your utility bills because you have the solar panels there. Uh, in addition to that, there are smart features, which we'll talk about in a couple of slides. And then also you will be required to pick up the furniture package if you want to be in the rental program. I know there are a couple of you who are not planning to be in the rental program, but if you are, then you do need to have this. Even if you wanna be in it down the line, um, you will be given a list of things that are gonna be required if you do change your mind at any point. So it's easier just to get it done now. Um, and we'll go through that furniture package in a bit. And then in Belize generally, uh, and this is, I think many of you, and I was talked about this, closing costs are 8% of the purchase price. Um, so just bear that in mind. We did talk about a lot of the numbers turnkey, but we can certainly give you more of a breakdown for your specific model as we get to your condo. Uh, and then at this one, at this point, phase one does have a wait list at, of 21 people. Uh, we have not yet started to advertise phase two, but anybody who does not make it into phase one on this wait list will get moved over to phase two. And I, like I said, I know we have some of the folks from the wait list here. So here are some overall renderings. This is from the recreation area. So there'll be palapas. And if you're not sure what a palapa is, it's this little umbrella here um, or the, the thatch that they use to make the umbrella. So we refer to these quite often as palapas if they have that sort of roof. So there'll be lounge chairs, kayaks, accessible, um, and palapas with, with chairs and really having that third space for people to come together. Here's an overview of the homes. And then here is the interior of one of the palapas, that common area palapa for, for folks to come together. So TESS Village, what TESS stands for is Tiny Eco-Friendly Smart. As you all know, these are our small homes. We'll go through the square footage of them a little bit more specifically, but I think you all did receive the floor plans where you're able to see the exact dimensions. Uh, in addition to that, they are eco-friendly. Like we talked about, there's the solar uh, power sol solar power hybrid system. So you'll be able to power your house during the day and then connect up to the grid at night. 
And I think that that's very important for, uh, for you, especially if you do have renters. And then there's also the smart features. And this is really quite neat. Uh, it is also optional. So if you don't want any of these smart features, just let us know beforehand. But if you do want the smart feature, basically you'll be able to control your home from your phone. So you're able to unlock your doors, you're able to check the security cameras, uh, control the home temperature, turn off and on appliances and lights all from the app of your phone. And I think this is quite convenient, especially because as you're down there, you're going to the beach, you're getting everything together, putting your towel in your bag, making sure your sunscreen's on, and then all of a sudden you leave the AC on. And we know that air conditioning is one of the biggest users of electricity. So if you're going out to Secret Beach and all of a sudden you check your app and you see that your air conditioning is on from your phone, you're able to turn that off. But like we said, this is optional. You don't need it, um, but it is just a standard part of the package. There is no discount if you do not want the standard features. So let's jump right into the model. So there are three models. There's the studio model. It has a kitchenette. Um, it does have um, a stove over here, but primarily it is sized as a kitchenette. It's about 334 square feet plus the outdoor space. So once you include the outdoor space, which is the front terrace and then also the rooftop, the rooftop half of it will uh, contain the solar panels and the other half is going to be the palapa like we saw right over here. So this is the, the plop on the rooftop. So there's an abundant amount of space, which is not considered into the square footage space that you see on the screen. So for the blue coral, it's 139.9 plus the closing costs and furniture. That's for the cash and 50% financing. We do have 80% financing available. There is a bit of a premium for it, but that option is there uh, if you're only able to put down 20% or only want to put down 20%. There's the furniture package there of $7,500. Uh, and then if you want the stackable washer dryer, they are a, a bit more expensive in Belize than I think we're used to in the States, but that's just what it costs. But if you want that stackable washer dryer, that is there. So just quickly looking at the rendering over here, or the, the floor plan, you have the space for the washer dryer over here. You have owner lockout closet over here. So you're able to store your stuff in there. Uh, and then there's the queen bed glass floor. This is something that was fairly new to um, the, the, the floor plans was that they do have that glass floor, glass floor there. So you're able to see through. And this is the, uh, these are the renderings for the interior studio there. So I personally like the studio. I like the configuration of it. Uh, I like how it feels quite spacious, but of course that is ultimately up to you. The sea turtle is a one bedroom model. It has a full kitchen. Uh, Wade, are you, I think you're on here, Wade, but Wade asked me, um, how does it work with the bedroom? Can, is there enough space on, this, on either side of the queen for it to be configured? Should it be pushed up to one side? Uh, there's enough space for it to be either. So if you would rather have more space on one side, then I would recommend pushing it up against the closet. Uh, or if you want a little bit of space on each side, then I would recommend keeping it in the middle, but that's totally up to you. Uh, in addition, there is, let me go down the list here. Um, so this one's a bit smaller in size, about 306 square feet plus that outdoor space. So again, this also has that terrace and then it has the rooftop with the palapa. This one's 139.9 plus the closing costs and furniture. That's for the cash and 50% financing. If you want to take on the premium for the 80% financing, it's 159.9. And then furniture package is same as studio for 7,500. And then if you want to add that stackable washer dryer, you're able to do that. And that'll be right over here. Um, so what I like about this model is that you can lock off the washer dryer if you don't want your uh, guests to use it. Um, and then also it's not indicated here, but you do have a smaller owner lockout closet, which if you can follow my cursor is right over here on the, the left hand side to the left of the closet uh, that would be used as your owner lockout closet. So just some things to consider. And then also what's quite nice about the one bedroom is you're able to shut the door if uh, you want a little bit more privacy or if you have uh, somebody who's visiting, it gives you some of that, that space. And again, these do have the glass floors and this does have the full kitchen. So just something uh, to bear in mind there, it does have the full refrigerator and it has a larger stove. And then, oh yes, what we talked about with, um, with Wade was that with this closet right over here, it'll be a sliding door where this one, it looks like it'll pull out, but it will ultimately be a sliding door. So you're able to access it. But that was the question that, uh, that we were going through email a little earlier. All right, so moving on here to the loft model. This is the starfish model. It's nice size, 400 
85 square feet plus the outdoor space. It's 158.9 plus the closing costs and furniture. If that's for the cash and the 50% prices. And then if you want to finance 80%, there's that premium for 179, 178.9. And the furniture package is a little bit more here. Um, it's 8,500. And then if you want that stackable washer dryer, you're able to do it. Now, um, something that I wanna point out about this model here, there are two, two, two things I wanna point out actually. One is that you have a ton of storage here in the back space. So if you're looking to bring some bigger items to store, uh, this may be the, the right model for you because you're able to do it here. Uh, in addition to that, in this storage area is where the washer dryer would be. So you would have to go outside to access the washer dryer, but also the nice part is that you can lock it up so that your guests are not using it if you don't want them to have access to it. Um, in addition to that, on the loft here, um, you'll see in the renderings that the ceiling looks quite low over the left-hand side of the loft, uh, but the ceilings will be a bit higher so that you can fit a twin bed over here so that you're able to fit three people in the sleeping area. Um, and like the other models, these all have the glass floor, it has the front terrace, and then it also has, um, excuse me, it also has the rooftop. So here is the interior, and this also worth noting that it's more of a kitchenette style with the mini fridge versus uh, the full fridge. So you can see over here what I was referring to is, is that the top, when you go up the stairs over on the left-hand side, um, the ceiling is pretty close there, but the ceiling will be raised a bit so that you're able to put a twin bed. I know some of you have kids that you were considering um, having stay there, so it's able to uh, accommodate a, a child up there or an adult as well. So this is the Starfish loft model. Um, financing. So you are able to finance up to 50% of your property if you choose through, through Key Bank. And the terms for that is 50% down, 6.9% interest. There is a five-year balloon and a 30-year amortization schedule. So 30-year amortization schedule, you have to pay it off in five years. You can refi through KeyBank. I can't guarantee what the rates are going to be. They'll probably be market rates at that point. Um, market rates in Central America typically range from 10 to 12%. So just bear that in mind. Um, in addition to that, there's 80% financing. Now, 80%, 50% of that is with KeyBank, and then ECI development is assuming the second mortgage of 30%. So you have a total of 80%. But the rate is 4.9% uh, interest, again, 30 year amortization with a five year balloon. So at the end of fifth year, you have to pay it off. Or you can do 80% financing, 2.9% interest, three year balloon over a 30 year AM schedule. So just take a look at that. If you want us to help run numbers for you based on what you're considering, do let us know and we'll be happy to do that for you. Um, I just had a client with the fleet building, our Best Western property, who was able to refinance her house in Colorado. And what she ended up doing was paying cash for her Best Western condo. And then um, she, and she was able to get great interest rates and it was over a 30 year period, 30 year AM schedule. So you're not obligated to use our financing. There are ways you can either refinance your house, get a second mortgage, whatever. Um, you can get a little creative with it if you choose, but otherwise we do have options for you there. Uh, and do note, like we talked about on the past slides, there is a bit of a premium for the 80% financing. Um, so just bear that in mind if you do want to do the 80% financing. Uh, in addition to that, so KeyBank is located on Ambergris Key. Um, it was co-founded originally by Mike Cobb and Joel Nagel, who are two of our co-founders of ECI Development. And it originally started out as a mortgage company in the early 90s and in the early 2000s transformed as a full-fledged bank. So they do provide loans. Um, we get some good rates with them, um, but uh, this is, is definitely the best that they can do through the bank. So just again, some, some options for you, something to uh, bear in mind as you're, you're weighing what it is you would like to do. All right, so I have had a lot of people ask me about the rental program. So there's a lot of flexibility with the rental program. You're able to come and go as you please, um, but I do wanna say this and be very clear about it. If you're planning to occupy your home from any point in about Thanksgiving or middle of November, to about middle of May, that is considered high season, Christmas, Easter, that is peak season. So just understand that a bulk of the rentals happens during high season. Um, so if you are, are truly dependent on the return on investment and the cash for the door, I would recommend waiting or not coming during that time period. Or if you do come during that time period, just understand 
that you won't be getting as high as a return on investment as some of the other folks who have theirs rented out during that season. Um, but that, with that being said, there are two ways that your condo or your home can be rented here. We have nightly rentals. We're gonna go through a performa in a second so you can see what that looks like. But the nightly rentals off of the gross, there's a 15% rental acquisition fee, which you as the owner can receive. And we're gonna talk about that in a couple of minutes, but, um, but typically that goes to an online travel agency. So that goes to booking.com, Expedia, TripAdvisor, wherever this condo or this home is being advertised. So right off the top is where that rental acquisition fee goes, credit card fees, and then there's the Belize income tax. Uh, from that remaining net, so the adjusted gross, 70% goes to the owner, 30% goes to the management company. Now, if you wanted to do long-term rentals, you're able to do that as well. But again, if your primary objective is return on investment, nightly would probably be better. And there's also a lot more flexibility with nightly if you're planning to come and visit. But from the long-term, straight from the gross, there's a 10% rental acquisition fee, which goes to whoever is the person that refers the client or the guest to us. There is credit card fees, and then also there is Belize income tax. Note in Belize that for a long-term rental, which is three months or more, income tax is 3%. If you go back to the left-hand side over here, you see for nightly, it's 1.75%. So again, just little things to bear in mind, but then from the remaining split, the rental management split is 85% to the owner, 15% to the management company. So you have the choice. You can decide what you want to do. If you want to try with long-term and that's not working out, you go to nightly. If you want to try nightly and that's not working out, you can try long-term. Again, that's up to you, but long-term is defined as three months or more. So here is a copy of the projected performa. So um, some of you may have received this before. We have since adjusted it uh, to make it applicable to um, the current situation. <laughs> But you'll see here, we have two different uh, columns. And the column here on the left-hand side using outside referral agents. So this is if you're using, and you'll see here, um, Expedia, booking.com, et cetera. Um, so just to run through this quickly. So occupancy, we say it's at 59%, so 215 nights. The average daily rate is $175. Um, from there, our, we, don't, we don't include appreciation or projected value, but the gross revenue, would be 37,000, almost $38,000. Right off of the top is the income tax at 1.75%, the credit card fee, which could be up to 4%, sometimes it's a little bit less, but up to 4% for the highest case scenario. And then that reservation acquisition fee that we talked about, that 15%. So your total gross expenses would be um, $7,849. So the adjusted gross comes out to 29, so about 30,000. 30% of that goes to the management team. It says Graham Bayman there, but you get the point. 70% goes to uh, you, which would be the owner. Now from your, your profits here, there are expenses that you need to be paid. So there's the trade license. That's what allows you to have your house in the rental market. Uh, there's the HOA fee, which is about $250 a month. We're gonna go through what's included in that. Uh, room supplies, if you're renting, we you know, get cleaning materials, for example. Uh, property tax, which we've estimated at $150 US uh, a year. Of course, that's subject to change at discretion of the, gov the lands department and government of Belize. Um, electricity, I've estimated high here. This is um, probably closer to what I pay in, in my, for my 500 square foot condo. That's not eco-friendly, but again, we'd rather err on the side of too high. So $1,200 uh, internet, about $420 annually. And then insurance, this is optional. This is up to you about $640. So at the end of the day, you're still, I mean, looking to do really quite well here, 9.7% net return on investment after your expenses are paid. Um, I know when Alan and I were talking, he's like, how can we get that number a little higher? Well, of course, there are a couple of factors when we're looking at that. One is if we increase our nightly rate, and of course, as we increase, uh, increase occupancy. Uh, what Alan and I discussed is this is a fairly new concept. This is a very new concept for Belize. We know that the, um, that the, the, the key next to us, Cayo Espanto, which is a private island, um, they rent very well. Like I said, $1,000 a night up, depending on what time of year it is that you're renting. So uh, we're just kind of playing around with rates right now. We don't know how it's going to do, but what we'll be able to do is estimate based on occupancy year one 
if our rates were too high. If we had you know, over bookings, we'll say, or we were at 100% occupancy, that's great, but we probably also priced our units too low. So we'll be able to adjust it a little bit. Um, personally, I think that these condos, these homes are gonna do a lot better um, than we expect. I think it'll take a year or two to ramp up, but I can tell you the number of inquiries that have come in, it, come in from our website so far, just for people who wanna purchase these because they think they're cool and wanna have them as a rental is extraordinary high, extraordinarily high. And we really haven't done any marketing um, at this point. At this point, it's really been word of mouth. Uh, maybe a few of you we've seen at conferences or you've been on our discovery tour, but we have not sent any email blasts about this to our database. We haven't even informed all of our shareholders. So this is, um, I think, going to do very, very well. And a lot of people are looking, you know, for that Bora Bora Maldives kind of kind of setting, but closer to home. And I know, I think it was Amanda when we were talking. You're like, oh, I thought that they would be like four or five hundred dollars a night. Uh, and there's definitely the potential for that. But again, we just have to get through the first year or two and, and see how they do and then just readjust. But uh, based on a conservative outlook, um, th these are the numbers that we came up with. If anybody wants to get a copy of it, uh, just let us know and we'll, we'll email this over to you. Obviously, this is just a projection. Uh, we cannot guarantee any of these numbers, uh, but I, I do think it is looking quite positive for owners who want to rent. So one thing that I want to mention before we jump too far is I talked about, oh, let me go back here. So if the owner is a referral agent, so if you are the one who is providing clients to stay at Test Village, then you are the one who's going to be receiving that 15% reservation acquisition fee. So as you follow my cursor here, you could see each year that could bring you in an additional $5,600. And then, you know, that's if you're getting all 250 room nights, which may or may not be possible. Um, but you can see there's a lot of flexibility there for you to do very, very well. And for our realtors on the line, you may know this program as IREP, um, but this is our international referral network program. We did just have a name change there, but it is applicable also to all of our homeowners. So if you would like to promote staying at the Test Village bungalows, then you are able to receive that 15% acquisition fee for anybody who you refer who stays. So the really neat part too is that even if your bungalow is rented or let's say you're coming down and you're bringing a group of friends and they're all gonna rent and you refer them, you'd still get that 15% um, even if they stay in somebody else's home because you are the referral agent at that point. So I know a lot of our owners, especially our realtors are excited about this because uh, there's quite a network that you have. But even if you're not a realtor uh, or a real estate agent, it's unbelievable to see the amount of traffic that you can get just from posting links on your own social media, emailing friends and family and letting them know about it. And that brings me here to the second box, the forest green box with a little finger pointing in. But uh, if you're familiar if you, with our international real estate referral program, this is very similar where each owner it would get a trackable landing page. So when somebody completes a form to book or to get more information, you as the specific owner would get um, would, would, would be registered as the lead source for that specific person. So if that person rents and stays with us, we'll look back on it because all of our reports have to show the lead source. And then we would know that that's you and you would get the credit for that stay and you'd be paid uh, after the visitor stays. So it's a really neat program. We have had owners who've taken advantage of this with our Grand Bayman property. I know also at Grand Pacifica to some extent as well. So uh, it works, it's very easily trackable. And even if you have somebody who comes down and decides that they wanna purchase a property within ECI development, you get compensated for that as well. But if you'd like more information um, about that, just contact Ali Affiliate at ecidevelopment.com. She can enroll you, she can tell you more about it, um, but we just make it super, super easy for you guys so that uh, you can show off the beautiful piece of property that you have in paradise. All right, um, moving on here. So the homeowners association fees. Homeowners right now, it's $248.73 uh, per month per home. It comes out to under $3,000 annually. And what it includes, upkeep of the common area. So there's the rec area, there's the third space, pier, uh, plapas, there's the pier, there's a future pool that's coming in phase two. Uh, in addition to that, there's the community boat taxi. Uh, I know a few of you have, and I have talked about that, but we're looking at running it about six times per day. So that would be included in your HOA security from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., landscaping of the on-land areas. So uh, that would include 
include the rec area, for example, um, a reserve fund, garbage disposal, and the wastewater maintenance and power use. So what it does not include is electricity that is going to be individually metered, and then the internet. Uh, internet is about 35 US dollars um, a month, 35 US dollars a month, you'll see that in the performa, and then the electricity we estimated at about 100 US dollars a month. Now, if you want insurance on your home, you're able to do that. We got a couple of quotes from the insurance companies around, uh, and it's estimated at about $640 a year, coming out to about $53 a month. And because of the type of construction we're doing, um, the insurance is really quite affordable. If we were building wood structures, which are definitely not built to hurricane category standards, but if we were, the, the insurance quote would easily be three, four, five times the price of this. So um, it, pays, it pays to build well and it pays to build quality. All right, so what the next about month and a half is going to look like. It's that first right of refusal process. So after this presentation here, everybody will receive a copy of it. You'll also receive the recording. And then we're going to be contacting the first person on the list and you'll give 48 hours to review the location on the site map. You can always choose the model later, but if you know that even better. And then after, once the location is chosen within the 48 hours, we'll contact the next person. And we'll contact via email um, I'll also give you a phone call if we don't hear from you within a few hours. I'd say, yes, I think some of you know this, I do tend to go to spam at times. Um, so just check your spam. But again, I think I have all your, I know I have all your cell phone numbers, so I'll give you a call or at least a uh, text as well. But you'll have 48 hours once contacted. And then paperwork will be distributed once the location and the model are chosen. You'll have seven days to review the paperwork, make your final decision. If you um, don't want to move forward, so as we go down this first right of refusal list, if you don't want to move forward, uh, then we will move on to the next person. Um, I know there were a couple of you who weren't sure if you were able to move forward at this point, but you may have somebody who would take your spot. That person would be required to take your spot, go through that information, give us the details at the time of your first right of refusal spot. Um, they don't have time after or time before to, to make that decision. So just bear that in mind. And then, um, if anybody decides not to move forward, whether we're going down the first right of refusal list or after they move the, uh, receive the paperwork, then we'll reach out to our wait list. So because there are 20 homes, there are 20 of you, two days, it's gonna be about a, a little bit more than a month and a half, about a little bit less than a month and a half, uh, this entire process. I'm gonna estimate that some of you already know the location that you want and uh, also know what model you want. Obviously, if you do know that, the, the quicker the better, but uh, of course I understand if you need a little bit more time. And what we'll do as we reach you, we'll just put a sold on the specific model numbers before you or the specific uh, locations before you that were chosen so it's easy enough um, to move forward. So I'm gonna review this timeline to funding then I'm gonna go back to the site map and we can go through questions. So timeline to funding, of course, this is subject to change, but we're looking um, at breaking ground in September. So next month, breaking ground, it would be 50% due less your deposit. The next payment coming in November, December, really would be 20% when the pilings are in, 10% uh, when the walls are up, 10% when the roof is on, then the furniture package payment, and then the final 10% when the keys are handed over to you. Uh, we do like to have owner parties as well. So we will have a get together for the owners. Uh, that'll be time for you to come down, inspect your home, uh, you're able to come down at any point too during the construction process should you choose but i think uh, we'll be we'll be entering the market at a really great time um, because high season typically starts there in in november so i think we'll be uh, opening the, the homes at a really good time um if you're financing just note that uh, the, the, the timeline is going to be the same but you're going to have parts of your finance portion so you will have mortgages during the time of the uh, construction but very similar, the 50% less your deposit will be due before construction, so September. Uh, what I would also recommend is talking to KeyBank if you are planning to finance with KeyBank. You do need to apply. Um, you are pretty much pre-approved um, as ECI homeowners, uh, but there are still some formalities that they'll need to go through. Uh, you will need to complete an application and go through that process. So it could take about 30 to 60 days so if you are planning to finance with KeyBank, or even if you just wanna have a general conversation with them, I would recommend doing that. 
sooner rather than later. And then out of the finance portions, there's that 20, 10, 10, 20, 10, 10, 10. Um, so that'll be taken out from the finance portion. So you will have that mortgage during the construction period, just something to, uh, to bear in mind there. And then in addition to that, what cannot be financed is furniture and the closing costs. So you will be responsible for, for putting 50% down um, plus the closing costs and the furniture, or if you're doing 80%, it would be the 20% down plus the closing costs and the furniture. So just something, <coughs> excuse me, to bear in mind as you are uh, weighing your options about how to, how to pay for the home. Um, I had somebody reach out to me a couple days ago about the airport, um, Belize Airport being open. I know there are a handful of people who are planning to come down in the next couple of months. Um, at this point, Belize has pushed back the opening of the airport. Uh, it was originally scheduled for August 15th, but uh, right now they're not entirely sure when it's going to open. I've heard rumors for October. I've heard rumors for November. I mean, nobody is really sure at this point. So uh, we'll definitely keep you posted. We would love for you to come down and, and visit during the construction period, especially if you haven't been down there before. We'll show you around, give you the grand tour, or even if you have been down before and just looking for a little getaway, that will be great. But we'll keep you posted during, um, as any big changes are made at this point. But uh, unfortunately, airport is not going to reopen on the 15th at this point. All right, so that brings us to questions. So what I'm gonna do is actually go back to the sitemap because I did have a couple of people ask me questions about which homes are the best. I mean, everything is, is really relative depending on what it is that you're looking for. I think most of us want a nice view, want water, we're over the water, so you at least have the water below you. Um, but as you can see here, just from the, the configuration and let me move phase two back so that that gives you a better idea of locations. So there'll be some space in between phase two and phase three. Um, but somebody was asking about seeing open water. So seeing the Caribbean or seeing the backside of the bay from the homes. From the second floor, you, you will be able to, every home will have a second floor. You'll have the, uh, the palapas. So you'll be able to get the sunrise and the sunset views as well. Um, the ones that are a little bit closer here to the top of the rec area, um, just note that there are going to be condo buildings, so there may be a little bit of a blocked view at some point, but uh, you still will have that view going out here um, to, to the north, the northeast, so right over here in this area over here. Um, but like I said, from the second floor, you will have, you will ultimately have views from the, of the Caribbean end of the bay, which is the sunrise, and then also the sunset. Um, but I mean, again, it just depends on, on what sort of home you're looking for, the location, how close do you want to be to the reception. If you can follow, I'll go over here. Reception area is right over here. Palap area is over here. Here's the rec area. So do you want to be closer to the reception area? Do you want to be closer to the palapa? Do you want to be closer to the recreation area? Um, it just really depends. You want to be a little bit closer to the land. It just really depends on, on your personal view there. Um, but I don't think any of them are, are bad locations. Locations. Um, previously, we did have the site map slated to have a couple more homes, but uh, since took those out because we wanted to make sure there was an, enough of that, that privacy, enough space, um, which varies between them, but at least it's a lot, uh, not as close as, as they were before. But um, what we'll do is we'll keep this open, and I do have Patrick here on the line with me, and Patrick is going to help me answer um, some of some of these questions, if I don't know them, he's definitely more of the uh, the, the the techie utility kind of guy. And Patrick's our chief operating officer. For those who don't know him, um, from Canada, been living abroad what about a decade, a little bit more than a decade at this point, Patrick. Um, and he really specializes in tiny homes and eco-friendly features. So this is a question, Patrick. Patrick, are you there? Is that you? I am here, yes. Okay, great. So here is a question that I don't exactly know the answer to. Since your PV system is not going to have batteries, does the Belize electric meter use a net metering? In other words, your meter can run backwards during the day if power is not needed. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, I mean, a lot of countries do have a net metering system where, you know, as you produce power and put it back onto the grid, your, your meter literally runs backwards and you you know, you, in, in some countries, depending on their, their power systems, they'll actually pay you for the power you produce. Um, 
unfortunately, at this point, Belize is talking about that. Um, so are a lot of the other Central American countries, but they do not currently support um, basically paying for the power that you produce. So the power that you're creating um, with your home's solar panels will, will basically eliminate the use of other power during the day, um, but not, not be, uh, you know, running your meter backwards. In, in other words, you're not gaining um, back the power that you used off the grid. Now, realistically, in, in this kind of climate and, and the environment above the water there, um, well, first of all, backing up a little bit, you're, you're really your big power users in these homes will be, 90% will be your air conditioner. And the next, the next thing will be your refrigerator. And other than that, you know, you rarely have, you know, you know have LED, eco-friendly lighting, a ceiling fan, they're usually about 40 watts when they're, when they're running. So they're not, they're not big users of power. The air conditioning is everything. So if you're spending your time out, you know, um, during, the, during the day and, and or, or, or air conditioning your, your home during the day and you're, you're taking advantage of cooling down the home with your, you know, solar produced power, you know, you can really keep the home quite cool at night without very much usage at all. So, um, you know, it, it, it does take sometimes a little bit of, uh, of thinking when you're when you're if you're wanting to keep the utility use down too but a lot of the smart technology that we're putting in too is you know for for renters especially not so much necessarily used when owners are there but for instance the uh we have um wi-fi based thermostats for your ac so you can can you can set minimum set points and things because you know renters when they're not paying for the power will tend to come in and set their air conditioner down to like what feels like an arctic temperature and then and then leave <laughs> and yeah. and you know that that's really just a a, a lot of wasted power so we, we have some control over that with the smart features as well awesome and this kind of segues into that question it says all homes all the homes are electric if not can we all can we go all electric um, yeah you'll be connected to the grid james so if you wanted to you you certainly could go all electric but it will definitely increase your power bill. Well, yeah, I mean, to answer that, the, these are hybrid, these are hybrid homes. So when the sun, the sun is producing power during the day and, and the sun actually produces quite a bit of power through clouds, you still get quite a bit of production of, of power, even when it's a cloudy day. Um, that your, your system, your internal system of the home will automatically use the power from the solar panels if it can. And if they're not producing and it, it automatically flips over to the grid, you don't even notice it happening. It just is an automatic thing. So there's no, there's no downside to the solar panels. I mean, you always have power. You just, right. you won't know, necessarily know where it's coming from. All right, and here's another question. Um, I'm gonna see a lot of really good ones here, but I'm gonna try to go in order of, of topic. So this one, and this is one for you, Patrick, is about climate change associated with sea levels rising. Is that a concern for low-lying keys? Are there surveys predicting short and term sea level rise and how high are these homes going to be built? The homes are actually, um, the, the platform that your home is on is about five feet above mean sea level. Um, tides in this area are very minimal. I, mm -hmm. I think Rachel mentioned I come from Canada and <clears throat> our, you know I love sailing so I I know the tides pretty well and we get you know 14 15 18 foot tides in in canada um that, you know it's a massive change in in the water levels here you know it's averages of less than a foot maybe a foot and a half and two feet on extreme times so um it would take an enormous amount of of sea level rising you know from global warming that you know, won't even the worst predictions won't get you near the, near the, the the sea level within the next hundreds and thousands of years. But but you know at five feet above the water level, you're you're significantly above the water. Now the other thing that Rachel mentioned earlier too is you know it's a it's a fairly protected spot. Um, if you're looking at the uh, at the um, maybe Rachel, you can flip back to the yep. to the the uh, site I map or not the site map. Yeah, like that one. So the right side of this photo the the east side you can see the where the waves are kind of breaking the dark blue is the deep water the waves start breaking there on the reef itself and then the light blue hits 
in you know the the space between the reef and the uh, and the island and if you if we had the bigger picture of this and you zoomed out you'd see that the it's kind of a horseshoe shape the land connects back on the top again um, there there so you can see that you know the the wave action actually comes completely from the right side of the of the of the island <clears throat> that's where the you know atlantic is out there the caribbean so you know the the water you won't get the wave action at all in in uh, you know in the test community and especially since that's a is also an isolated pond now admittedly it's a tidal pond so there is you know minor ups and downs in it but but even that it's because it's isolated and it has to the water has to go through a bit of a shoal it doesn't even change as much as the rest of the water does it doesn't have time in the you know roughly 6 hours that a tide takes to change to fill up and drain so it's it's actually very very little change in in water level on the on the on the the lagoon that the test homes are above all right perfect all right, and next question. This is probably uh, good for you, Patrick, because you handle a lot of the operations um, and the rental management. You work with, with that team quite closely. Is from Amanda. She said, can we market our unit for hire on social media? Um, yeah, I want to actually make a comment on one of the things you'd said there too, that uh, you sure. said like, we'll, 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 we'll watch it during the first year and you know I, we won't we won't take a year we'll take a week uh, if, if, we're, <laughs> sure. if we're getting a, if we're getting 100 percent occupancy right off the bat and bookings are coming in you know the obviously the the rental rates are going to continue to climb it's like booking flight or seats on an airplane as they hit 50 percent the rate jumps they hit 70 percent and so on so it doesn't take very long it's all built into our point of sale systems for the rental management group and you know that they you know, the, I, I'm not saying it'll hit the thousand dollar a night level that you were mentioning, Rachel, and some of the other places. But I, I do believe that, you know, these places will will be so popular that, you know, that we will definitely see an uptick in that in that ADR in the average daily rate very quickly. So, you know, our our ROI predictions are are I think quite conservative. But I'd rather see that than than them, you know, you know, saying something that we can't that we can't hit. So yes, you can, people can definitely, obviously, as Rachel mentioned, you know, go for that acquisition fee for yourself. You can, you know, uh, rent them out. I, I don't know if that the hire was spelled as in hire as in higher up, um, but for hire <laughs> in, in both, both yes for hire, you can view it on your social media and for higher rates. Yes, you can do that too. So. And then this question pertains, that's from Jesse. Um, he says, and he pretty much answered, are the rates exclusively set by ECI? Would all blue coral and sea turtle units be rented for exact the same, exactly the same? Um, blue coral and sea turtle are the studio and one bedroom. Yeah, I mean, that we, we tend to have, you know, varying rates in most of our properties based on kind of, a, you know, there's a di different tiers or levels of, you know, if, for instance, if the one unit sleeps um, three people, that might be a reason that it's got a bit of a premium. Uh, or the one with a separate bedroom, you know, some people prefer that. So there, there are different rates and, and, and they, they somewhat equate to the cost of the home as well. I mean, the, the, the more expensive the home, there's likely features or space or something that makes it more attractive to renters as well. So there will likely be, uh, you know, somewhat of a different rate per, per home. And here's a great technical question for you, Patrick. Not too technical, but I know you'll know the answer. Is how do the barn doors seal? Well, the, the barn doors, I think, that we've got in these models, um, I'd have to little, go back and look at the floor plans. We're talking about interior barn doors, and, and they don't really seal. They just, you know, butt together. Um, the outside doors are, are typical sliding glass doors like you would have any kind of, you know, hurricane-rated sliding glass doors and seal that way. I right. don't know if I answered the question or if I understood it properly, but yep. hopefully. Uh, here's a question from Matt and he says, do you have any information about a road being built between the development and Secret Beach? And uh, Matt, if you take a look, if you could follow my cursor for a second, uh, this is the Secret Beach area up here. And then as you go down, this is a road that has in fact been built. So it doesn't come exactly to the property. Um, it's, a, it's close enough and you'd be able to actually, you know, get off a golf cart and, and walk um, to it. But that road is there. 
Um, and it is a public access thing, so people are able to use it. Yeah, I actually, not too long ago, uh, I took the, took the little ferry across to the property, but then I walked up the, up the, the beach there towards that road. And it isn't very far. It's a few hundred yards away where it, where it ends. And then there is some other development happening not too far away from us there too. So theoretically, you wouldn't really need to take um, the boat across. You could go around, you know, full circle. It's probably, what does it take, Rachel, but 40 minutes by golf cart to get to Secret yeah. Beach. So yeah. add, another, add another 15 or 20. So you're probably an hour away really from San Pedro by golf cart you know, to, to make that loop. Whereas you're five minutes away by the, by the boat. But, you know, if you wanted to, you know, certain bring, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff or whatever you wanted to do, you, you theoretically, theoretically could, or you could spend the, you know, the day at Secret Beach and, and come home that way. All right, here's a great question from Maria. How would any potential future, future assessments be handled, any HOA or budget meetings? I mean, we expect to have a standard HOA. Um, we'll have a board of directors. Um, I, I think because this these phases are, are you know so popular and getting sold out pretty much right away, I expect you know we'll we'll create a. Typically, any developer will wait till a certain percentage of a phase is is sold before turning over the HOA to, you know, to the to the owners. Um, but this this is likely going to happen fairly quickly for for us. So. Assessments would be, um, you know, a, a, a responsibility of, of the board on the, of the HOA. Now, hopefully we don't, we don't see any assessments for quite some time. These are going to be brand new homes and a brand new pier and everything's brand new. So, you know, I don't see any, you know, type of, you know, issues where something would need to be replaced that assessments usually deal with. All right. And then this is a question that pertains back to Jesse's previous question. My question was referring to, for example, if there are 10 sea turtle homes, would all 10 be rented out for the exact same nightly rate? Uh, in, oh, sorry. I guess I, you know, in that case, yeah. I mean, there, it'll be typically, yeah, the same model of home with, you know, if you're in, if you're, some people won't even put their home into the rental pool. They might just want it for themselves, whether they're fully living there full time or just don't like to be in a rental pool or program, then, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the, we, we, we typically, you know, we'll have a kind of a, a well, the furniture package that we have for this will, will put you above that bar, but we have a minimum kind of level of furniture and, and accessories type of um, standards that you need. So, you know, all the homes would be relatively up to that standard so that they would, you know, if they're the same model, they should rent out for the same price, yes. All right, fantastic. Um, and now here's a question from Amanda, and you might know it a little bit better, definitely better than me, I hope. What is the water like where the homes are built and what is the wildlife fish like? Wildlife fish that are in the area. Well, there's a, the, like I said, the lagoon is, is somewhat isolated. It is a tidal lagoon with a very narrow entry for the, for the ocean water to come in and out. Um, it tends to be more of a, you know, a breeding spot for small fish. So you, you, you do get a few um, different types of fish. Um, you get lots of starfish, you get jellyfish. Um, so there is, you know, these glass, but one of the reasons why we put in the glass bottom or the glass panel on the floor so you could kind of you could sit there and in your living room and 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 just you know stare down at what's what's coming by underneath you and it, it's 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 got a lot of different things growing in there i mean there there's there's uh needle fish i've seen in there um i can't remember not i want to call it tarpon it's not tarpon but there's a similar type of fish that can get you know fairly large those are four or five feet long but they're, they're most of the most of the bigger um, fish and and wildlife is is in the lagoon, the, the the official kind of lagoon outside of this lagoon, which is what this one drains into. So, you know, it, most this is more for you know it has more you know, smaller wildlife, I guess, you could call it. 
All right, uh, here's another question. <laughs> James, James Sweat says, since this is an ECI development project, can we all assume the deck and the outdoor furniture is teak? <laughs> not yet, James. The, the teak is not yet mature, but we will be integrating the teak into the Panama tiny home. So I'm glad you're, you're thinking ahead there. <laughs> that was great. Um, and here's a question from James F. He says, any suggestions for what to do if you wanted a desk slash office space? And we could definitely talk about that, James, um, and just go through the, the plans a little bit more specifically. There wouldn't be maybe one model that where it's a little bit easier to convert um, the space to a desk area. Maybe maybe Blue Coral take out the couch over there, get a small chair, and, and put a desk in this corner over here. But there's there's definitely some customization um, that would need to be done in order to get that that space there. Yeah, on, on that one, Rachel, there, there is one model. Like can't remember what we called it here. It's the one with the loft with the, with the also has the twin bed option. Yep. Un underneath that loft, we've had, we have another, we have a similar floor plan at another property that, that converts that space into uh, into a little office. So oh, yeah, that, sure. that, that's, uh, that's, a, that's, an e that's a fairly easy option to integrate. And then Marie asked, does the furniture package include decor any personalization available um, it does have decor I mean it has little standard features um, suitable for the rental we try not to encourage too much personalization um, I know when people personalize you know sometimes they try to rent them for more or sometimes if something goes missing our rental management team is not aware that you put that extra thing in there so if you want to really personalize it um, for when you're there I would recommend just kind of putting anything away into the uh, the owner lockout closet um, just for, for safekeeping. But we do ask if it's going to be in the rental program that it is it is the standard furniture uh, package. But the decor, yeah, it'll have a wall art. It'll have little tchotchkes to put on the tables and uh, some of the extra space. But it will uh, look very, very good. But again, if you wanted to personalize it any more for when you're there, I'd recommend just kind of storing stuff when you are not there. Um, James says in the renderings, the wood looks like for Formica. Is it going to be real wood? I don't even know if you can get Formica here. So yeah, it'll be real wood. <laughs> Belize has, a, Belize, like a lot of the Central American countries, has a lot of great hardwoods and ma mm -hmm. mahogany is used heavily here and bullet tree is another one. And, and they're, they're both great long lasting, you know, similar properties to teak. Don't, they don't last necessarily quite as long as teak, but but uh, you know, they have similar properties in a marine environment. Um, and then last question I'm seeing here, and we are just about at the hours from Maria, and she says, how deep is, um, is the, the artificial lagoon? But I think you mean that the tidal, the tidal lake there. The, the yeah, it's not really an artificial, artificial lagoon. It's a real lagoon. It's, uh, we, didn't, we didn't dig it. It was nature put it there. Um, but it, it's a um, deepest spot is about six feet. And it probably averages about three or four feet. So it's not deep. Um, you know, it's pretty shallow, shallow lagoon. So, but that, you know, the, you know, for the most of the park, you can, you can see the bottom, you know, pretty much it well, you can see the bottom pretty much everywhere. So. Yep. And then a mass Amanda asks, can you swim in it? Well, you can <laughs> basically, I mean, that. It's in, in some areas, it's going to have kind of, you know, seaweed type of bottom and might not be the, the greatest thing, but, you know, I don't know, Rachel, what are your thoughts on swimming in it? Yeah, I mean, you definitely could, especially in the, the bigger lagoon right over here in this area. There are the docks. You're able to, to jump off those and be in the... Yeah, the and on, on the, uh, on the uh, kind of the, what did you call it, the Christmas tree, the tip of the Christmas tree? <laughs> yeah, the tip of the where the common area is, you know, there, there'll be like the sandy area, but, you know, in terms of, you know, jumping off of your, you know, the deck by your home, I, I don't know if I'd recommend that, but, but, uh, you know, the, that, the area at the top of the Christmas tree kind of thing will be, will be, you know, have sand bottom and you know, a nice little spot to hang out in the water. Yep. And this is what Patrick was referring to with the wreck area, the beach. So a nice swimming area over here for sure. 
All right. So I see Eric, uh, you left a couple comments too. I'll get in touch with you to review those. Um, but what we'll do is we'll get this webinar recording out to everybody. We'll get you the links. If you have any other questions, just feel free to reach out to me or your specific property consultant and we'll make sure we get those answers for you. Uh, but in the meantime, I appreciate all of you being on. Uh, I think this, this went really well and I'm really excited uh, to meet you all in person if we haven't met yet and to have our owner's party. Uh, at some point, uh, hopefully by, by next September, we'll, we'll have the chance to uh, get together again. All right, everybody, have a great evening, a great afternoon, and we'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you.